Today we are playing a vampire stole my Kimbo parentheses them bow. It's by Oliver Darkshire, I believe. This is literally my first time DMing. I have no idea what I'm doing. We're just gonna roll with it and hopefully it ends up being somewhat entertaining. Just roll with it. That was a pun. I didn't realize. <laughs> You're just gonna need your D10s. As it says on the tin, your partner has oh. been stolen by a vampire. You have to get them out before nightfall when the vampire wakes up. And apparently on no account are you allowed to fall in love with the vampire. Do not, it says in caps. So do not fall in love with the vampire. Uh, I don't think my head can dictate what my heart does. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we have three scores. You have injuries, which start at zero. You have clues, which starts at zero. And you have daylight, which starts at 10. If your injury score reaches 10, then you meet a grisly end, doomed by your own heroism. Your body is unlikely to be recovered, but you'll find good work in the afterlife as an undead servant, so that's pretty cool! If your clue score reaches 10, then you uncover your beloved in an enchanted stupor. You drag them from the castle and resolve never to invite anyone into your house ever again. You roll a d6. On a 1 through 3, you successfully escape for good. On a 4 to 6, your beloved is captured again the following night. So you might have to do this all over again. And then for daylight, if your score reaches 0, the night falls. Ta-da! And the vampire awakens. You are beguiled into the vampire's menagerie to engage in recreational evil and the occasional cursed bacchanal. If there's a dungeon party, which there clearly is, if you roll three consecutive ones in a row for any reason, you stumble across the tomb of the vampire whilst they slumber and then if you have five or less injuries you stake it through the heart if not it awakens and it eats you so be what? careful when you roll <laughs> we have tell me go playing clarabelle dairy and that's d-e-r-r-y i'm just saying for the stream because when i ah. watched dairy girls for the first time i was like why are we talking about cows <laughs> <laughs> clarabelle's vembo is named jean sheen do you want to go over how they disappeared my vembo disappeared the other night they told me they were letting in the electrician, but I heard them say, I invite you in, which is a weird ass fucking thing to say to an electrician. But then they disappeared immediately. Above Ms. Clarabelle, we have Harlow Q, whose himbo is named Nicholas Nikki Manaki. Would you like to go over how Nikki disappeared? Could you go over it pretty please? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Nikki said he was going for drinks with a new friend he met at the gym because he was pumping some mad iron, but hasn't come home since the other night, which is highly irregular behavior for your himbo because they go to the gym and they come back home. Right next to Harlow Q, we have Lilith Ravenmore, whose himbo is named Chad Bradlington. Chad Bradlington and Lilith unfortunately got into a fight and Chad stormed out saying he needed space. You haven't seen him since last night. And he always comes home after a fight because his grandma told him not to go to sleep angry at his partner. So this is also highly irregular behavior for your himbo. Below Ms. Lilith, we have Dr. Megan Tarn, whose himbo is Roderick Roddy Minor. Roddy disappeared right in front of my eyes while I was waiting for him at the movies. It was the evening and I saw a van drive by and kidnap him in the middle of the street. That happened a day or so ago. Through Find My iPhone, the four of you end up going through the weirdest parts of town, driving out into the woods, stuff gets foggy, it's all kind of eerie. Like this is broad daylight, but it feels as though the forest has closed in on you and suddenly it's really dark. The only thing that makes you know that it's daylight is one, your body is alert. And two, you look at your clocks and you're like, we still have 10 points worth of daylight out here. What's going on? Eventually the phone goes beep, 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 or whatever the sound find my iPhone does when it finds your iPhone. And it brings you to the front of this house and there's no other houses around. It's just this lone single house, very tall, wooden, old and fancy, overgrown with stuff. Like there's vines and shit just like dangling. It was clearly a nice house at one point because there's shrubbery out in the back. They could have been, I don't know, beautiful ladies or something. And they're just kind of lumpy. There was a lady reaching for something and she ends up having three breasts and like an extra bicep coming out of her bicep or something because the growth <laughs> has gone unchecked for so long. Y'all are at the front. Do you greet each other? What do you do? Did we yeah. get together or separate? Separately. Y'all arrive separately. This is all us like following our phones, right? Mm -hmm. I greet my fellow compatriots, whatever I want to call them. <laughs> Hi. I, however, say, who the fuck are you guys? You better not be the bitches that I think Nikki are with. <gasps> uh, 
No, no. I'm here to find uh, my, my partner. And your partner's not Nikki, right? No, no, it's not Nikki. Their name is Jean. Do you have proof of this? Here's their phone. I mean, my <laughs> picture of them on my phone. It's one down. Megan, by the way, has climbed out of a silver Aston Martin and is wearing a gray power suit with a mini skirt and killer heels. So all of you are having little fights with your boyfriends. Is that what this is for all of you? Because my boyfriend was fucking kidnapped. We weren't fighting. We were supposed to have a date night and he didn't show up after he went to the gym and I'm just, I'm terrified. Oh, how traumatic for you. My boyfriend was fucking kidnapped off the street. Oh my God. And you didn't do anything? I don't think she could go as fast as, how was he kidnapped? In a fucking van. Yeah, I stood by and watched my hot as fuck boyfriend just get run off by a guy. He works at and he looks fucking excellent when he does it. He's not just going to be kidnapped by some random mother off the street that he couldn't stop himself. Don't you think it's kind of weird that we're all here looking for our partners? Jean went missing the other day. They said that they were going to let the electrician in, but then they- Your partner's fucking an electrician? No, 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 no. We needed the electrician to come fix the light fixture. I swear to God, if this is some fucking orgy that they have somehow come up with, I'm going to kill him. Clearly none of you are any use. And Megan holds up her phone. As far as I can tell, Roddy is in here. I'm going to find my boyfriend. I don't care what you all do. And she goes and starts walking to the house. Are you three going to follow her or are you just going to stay squabbling? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Clarabelle's like, I, I just want to get away from all this tension. I'll, I'll follow. And well, definitely distance. not going to stay out here and speculate. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going in. As you guys go up the steps to the front door, you can hear the <gasps> creaking of the stairs because it's clearly <laughs> moldy and old, not taken care of. You almost are worried about the structural integrity of this wooden flooring. From above, you don't see it because you guys are right next to the door, but you hear the sound of like a curtain going like shh. I cannot fathom this place having running water. We can go see what the noise was. Megan walks up and knocks twice on the door and then just fucking tries the handle as soon as she knocks. It's like a mom, like, knock, knock. It's like a warning, not so much of a question. <laughs> as your fist pounds against the wood, it's very loud. It just seems to reverberate throughout the forest. So it's just boom, boom. Nothing happens. You try the door and it just swings open. And as you step into the foyer, you see that the house truly is bigger on the inside. Oh. Oh my god, it's hard <laughs> I assume it's very dusty in here. Yeah, as you come in, there's candle flames flickering, there's like a bunch of dust here and there, cobwebs. It's clearly just as derelict as it was outside. <laughs> as you rear your head back to sneeze, you see a portrait. It's a painting of a person in Victorian clothes holding this really weirdly ugly cat. You know that old cat from back in the day that like people came about on Twitter? Inspector like, Gadget? Twitter? Yeah. I know how to draw a cat, like one of those. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's one of those. <laughs> oh, this place is huge. I'm so glad I brought Nikki's inhaler. He must be dying right now. I could, I could use that too. I forgot mine. Could, could I have some? <laughs> what kind of fucking asthmatic idiot would leave his inhaler if he was going to cheat? Megan kind of puts her hands on her hands. like, your fucking inhaler. You seem very convinced people are fucking in this derelict house. Listen, my Nikki, he's a very amazing man. He's a beautiful person in and out. He is like my rock. I just, I cannot live without him. I, I can't. Such a person is a rarity. And I know that there are millions of other women who want him. I get so scared that he's going to find me. Inadequate. Since we're tracking our babes, is it safe to assume we've all tried calling them to no effect at this point? Of course. Yeah, I've called mine like 50 times. She's called to the point where she's gotten the message that says, mailbox is full. <laughs> called way too much. Meanwhile, for the rest of you, you've called and left a few voicemails. Decide how many voicemails is reasonable for you, but it just keeps going straight to voicemail. For Lilith, you got two calls in, and then the line is not available, like, straight to voicemail. Like, his phone is clearly dead. 
Megan, so, try calling Ronnie. As you're starting to call, you're starting to feel a chill come over you, and the hairs on the back of your neck start to rise, and the candlelight starts to flicker. There's not even wind blowing from the open door. They're just flickering on their own for no reason. And as you're dialing, and it goes, da -da 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 -da, it starts going, da -da 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 and it starts glitching out and it doesn't connect. If you look at your phones, you see that the tech is just constantly glitching out and nothing is starting to work. So it's suddenly very, very cold, very, very quiet, and your tech is not working. What the fuck? This is a brand new phone. Yeah, uh, mine's not working either. I would only expect this kind of shit from an Android. Exactly. You start hearing the scraping noise as if somebody's like dragging something behind them coming from down the hallway. Starting from where that sound is coming from, the lights are starting to turn off. Like oh, all no. the things are just distinguishing one by one by one. What are you going to do with this figure coming at you? Clarabelle's gonna turn the flashlight on her phone on and okay. just kinda like chuck it toward the dark the dark hallway. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're gonna take our D10 and we're gonna roll. Eight. I got a four. Eight. Six. <laughs> so as Clarabelle throws her phone and it does the little anime like whoosh, 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 like a shuriken <laughs> and you can see the flashlight doing the little strobe thing as it passes by. It goes Shing! past the figure and you can see a glimpse of their visage. You can tell that it's supposed to or it feels like it's supposed to be a person but you look at their face and something about it is just not quite right it's like somebody tried to make a, like a facility of a human being but it's just not accurate and lilith as you catch that glimpse you suddenly find yourself freezing and you feel something sifting through your brain oh, so no. what's your happiest memory oh no my happiest memory is me chad my only Maybe happy chad, memory you can physically feel a hand sifting through your mind picking up that memory of you <gasps> meeting chad and taking it from you and it's gone oh, no. oh. it's just gone the figure turns and goes into a different area of the house the lights of the flames that weren't extinguished are still there the chills go away and your phones your electronics everything starts working again well i guess minus clarabelle's because <laughs> <laughs> so lilith i would mark down one injury for you because it was oh. a mental trauma. emotional injury <laughs> <laughs> emotional damage emotional damage <laughs> <laughs> and then for everybody, mark down one clue because you saw the painting with the weird, ugly cat and the person in Victorian clothes. You said that her phone stopped glitching out. Yeah. Megan, like, looks at what just happened and is like, what the fuck? And tries calling Roddy again. You hear, like, a do, 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 do. It's very, very faint and it's somewhere deep in the fucking house. It's That's Roddy's like... phone. He's here. Megan's going to try to triangulate where the fuck that sound is coming from and is walking that direction. Make sure you mark down you have a clue. Oh, I have a clue? Okay, cool. Yeah, you found a clue. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Carlo Q is also going to follow up because since his voicemail is full, what else am I going to do? I'm going to look around and see if I can see anything that I can use as like a weapon. Is yeah. there an umbrella or like a... Is there anything um, that I can just grab to kind of keep around me? Yeah, so you see the lost vestiges of this umbrella that clearly <laughs> has been turned inside out way too many times. Other than that, you see a little snow glow of New York City! <laughs> <laughs> Gonna grab the umbrella. Okay. Carlo's gonna take the snow globe. Okay. That's excellent potential blood force trauma if whatever just happened, that thing comes back for us. You guys are gonna be trudging after the doctor as she tries to triangulate the do 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 sound. It takes you away from the hallway in that area that whatever creature humanoid thing that was had turned into. As you follow past the foyer, walk past the stairs, and then turn into another hallway where you're getting closer to the do 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 do, you come across a very angry looking goose wearing a cape. <laughs> And you hear the slap of his feet shuffling onto the floor. As he comes into view, he's holding a knife. I need you to roll. <laughs> a goose holding a knife? I got a three. Two. I got a three. Six. Arlo and Lilith, you're so stunned by the existence of this fucking goose that when it comes by, it throws the knife and it goes Shing! sliding past one of you, slicing you across the cheek. Oh, and then the I... other one, while the goose is trying to retrieve its weapon, it bites you on the ankle. Just <laughs> while the goose is biting at one of them, can Megan try to retrieve the knife instead of the goose? Can I try to take the Roll goose for it? I got an eight! You have to beat a ten, bud. Sorry. 
Damn it! Oh. <laughs> the goose somehow is very quick, bites the ankle, grabs the knife, and then it <laughs> away into the darkness. And you can hear just like, ha, 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 I like reach up and notice my cheek is bleeding. And I'm like, that's so metal. <laughs> And Harlow's like, you're definitely going to need a tetanus shot after this. I take the tissue and I'm like pressing it to my cheek. I think I'm up to date on my shots. Because <laughs> being properly vaccinated is the most metal of all. On that we yeah. can definitely agree. Are we going to talk about the uh, elephant or goose in the room? What the hell was that? It's gone. They're both gone. It's not. What if it comes back? back? Well, then we'll fucking fight the goose when it comes back. I can still hear Ronnie's phone. We move forward. The goose had a knife. Those things are mean as fuck. Do you want to go fucking chase down the goose? No, I want to keep going. I'm just saying we should be careful. Like, be more aware of our surroundings. I wish I had my phone. I shouldn't have thrown it into the fucking hallway. I'm sorry. It was it was the spur of the moment. I just had to see what was in the hallway and I wasn't thinking. You know flashlights work if you hold them too, right? <laughs> Not them far, that far away. Is anybody treating her ankle or are they just letting her bleed out? And I realized it was bleeding from the bite. <laughs> a little triple. Harlow Q reaches down thinking that she has an itch and it's like, oh, oh, fuck. Uh, Lilith I guess has I a need tissue. a shot and a rabies shot. <laughs> Can <laughs> geese have rabies? Can goose get rabies? <laughs> Avians pose no risk of rabies via direct transmission. Okay, oh, then man. avian flu. Avian flu is more likely than rabies. <laughs> <laughs> what diseases can geese carry? Geese can carry disease. Thank you, Google. As you walk, you can hear the sound. It's coming from a really dark room. You can see the light emanating, and then you can see it says baby heart on the screen. <laughs> Unlike Clarabelle, Megan's going to actually turn on the flashlight and scan it across the room from the doorway. It's just a regular looking room. There's just a bunch of furniture here and there. A lot of the furniture has white sheets over it to keep dust from settling on top of it, which is very funny because dust has very much settled on top of these sheets. And then you can see from where the phone was lighting up when you were calling, there's this beautiful armoire. It looks untouched. There's no dust on it. It just looks super regal. It's mahogany. Megan is going straight across the room to that fucking phone. Like, Ronnie? Ronnie, are you in here? Is anybody Ronnie? else joining or what's happening? Jean? Definitely, um. because Harlow thinks maybe Nikki is inside of that armoire. <laughs> 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 Lilith, are you following as well? I'm going to go into the room and I'm going to try to pull off the closest okay. sheet to me. As you guys go towards the armoire, the doors open up wide. And just like the house, it is a lot bigger inside than you think it would be. And it just whack, encompasses all three of you. And <gasps> fuck. now you're just in this armoire. Do and I notice dark, this happen? You're in the middle of pulling off a sheet and it causes this influx of dust. It's like confetti, beautiful dust mites getting all over whatever ridges and nooks and crannies that you have. And then you turn and on the outside, you can see eyes open up on this <laughs> armoire and then a little mustache forms. And then you hear, <coughs> <coughs> is it time already? Can we time hear this what? from inside the armoire? You can hear it from inside the armoire. Time for what? Carlo, <laughs> meanwhile, is going to be like, what the fuck? Did I just enter a Disney movie or some shit? What's it like on the inside? Does it feel like you're just inside of a cabinet you that three you are just like pressing yeah. against Her, each other? And Paul's like, I can't really use the inhaler right now. Please! And Harlow's gonna be like, no, this is for Nikki. What if it only has what? one cup left? He needs it. She's just gonna like grab for it. Where is it? Where is it? So then from the outside, the armor says, <clears throat> one moment, my lady. Closes his eyes, and then you can see eyes pop up on the inside where you guys are. Oh. And then the little mustache also disappears from the outside and appears on the inside. So now you see two eyes and a mustache forming. <clears throat> Would you mind your language, ladies? I find this. Claire Bell just goes, ah! <laughs> the racket. Ah! Claire Bell tries to poke the eyes, like, let us out. Ah! Oh, oh! The eyes close and they come back. <laughs> the little mustache disappears too. I'm gonna start hitting it with my umbrella. Please let my friend, these people I met, out. <laughs> let these people go. <laughs> this is not how it works. Would you? And you can see the wood, even though this is physically impossible, it's bending to avoid the hit <laughs> with the umbrella. Can you feel this? Like, ah, yeah. ah. You know how with the Viking, when you go down and you go up yeah. and you feel each <laughs> yeah. way? It's like the same thing. You're just like, whoa, push together this way. Whoa, yeah. push together this way. Back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be sick. This is not the 
way things are done. Would you stop hitting me? Otherwise, I believe one of your friends is going to be sick. Furniture doesn't eat people. Fit them out. Cease, and I shall tell you how things are done. I beg of you. Okay, I'm gonna stop, but I'm still holding it up threateningly. <laughs> and then you can see he kind of settles like, I give you a riddle, and you answer the riddle. Provided Mother that fucker. you answer correctly, you will be released. If you do not, well, I'll just have to wait till I digest you, I suppose. Oh, fuck. Are we in agreement then? Shall we begin? Let's just get this over with. When is a door no longer a door? When it's a jar. Oh! <laughs> and then the little mustache ends come together and they clap. You can see this from the outside. He's very, very pleased. Very well done, very well done. It looks like there is an intelligent one amongst you, no matter how violent you have been. And he slowly... <laughs> the door is open. And the three of you see Lilith just standing there, holding this broken-ass umbrella out. <laughs> Clarabelle scrambles out. Likewise. <gasps> Oh my god, thank you so much. And with that, I'd like you to mark one daylight gone. Oh no. When we climb out, Megan's going to grab, assuming Roddy's phone is still underneath the armoire, she's going to grab that and at the armoire is like, where is Roddy? This is his phone and it's under you. Where is he? I know not. Wait, please, Speak please up. let me. Have you seen four humans enter this house that are not us? At least one of them is smoking hot with an ass you could bounce a quarter off of. Yeah, mine. <laughs> What is a human? Things that look us. like us. Two arms, two legs, face, a little taller how, than us. How did this phone get here? Do you know that? No, not really. To be honest, I was in a slumber until you approached me. Kind of like oh, this thing is useless. Is there anything you can tell us about this house? Anything I can tell you about this house that the master would let me say. It is Wait, old. The master? It is very old. Who's the master? And master. how do we talk to him? Do you not see the portrait of the master upon entrance to the foyer? With the hideous cat? I will have oh. you know, Mr. Kitchens is not hideous. Have you seen the portrait in the foyer? Of course I have. Oh, and you're, you're gonna stick with that? Okay. It's not very creative on the cat naming. This is getting us nowhere. Well, we can't talk to the picture. Is there a physical master that we could talk to? Oh, of course, there's a physical master that you can talk to. Okay, where? You'd have me betray my master and tell you where he sleeps. Oh my yes. god! Why are we getting asleep? It's the middle of the day. I fear I have said too much. I bid you ladies good day. And he just kind of like shuffles wait, back wait, wait, to the wait, wall. Wait, 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 no! And closes his eyes and the mustache disappears and he's just an armoire. I'm coming back and lighting this thing on fire. <laughs> if we find this master person, maybe we'll get some answers. So let's find a bedroom. Why a bedroom? That's where people sleep. A bedroom, you know, there's a bed in the room. Because Megan has Roddy's phone now, can I check it to see if there's like anything new on it? Any pictures, any outbound texts or new notes yeah. in the phone? Yeah, of course. Okay, Megan's uh, going to do that. So as you turn it on, because I guess you know his passcode. Of course I do. It's my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to look for specifically? Knowing Roddy, he's never lacking for an excuse to take a selfie, especially with new friends. He can't always differentiate fucking assholes from new friends, so we're going to check photos. He's clearly taken a selfie with somebody. Of course he has. He's still alive. Oh, thank God. His arm is, like, placed as though he has his arm wrapped around somebody, and he's like this, but there's no one there. Mm. Is your boyfriend a mime? <laughs> <laughs> he's not a fucking mime but he does do this sometimes when he's somewhere new that i'm not with him and he tags me on it oh so he like pretends that you're there or something he does oh he's that's so really funny. sweet and then you could just photoshop wow. yourself in the oh that is he's so lame he's so fucking great no it's so cute no it's it's both it's lame and it's cute but this isn't the way he normally does it because he keeps it wide in case i'm wearing something with shoulder pads this doesn't look right <laughs> <laughs> this is his, This is what he does when he thinks he's made a new buddy. That grip. This is the new buddy grip. Where the fuck? There should be a person here. All four of you can mark 
clue. Maybe it's like one of those people in like those green suits. Then it wouldn't his out. arm be like, you, you wouldn't be able to see the back of his arm, right? I get where you're coming from. Roddy would not be smart enough to be able to fucking pull this off in a green screen. He's just, he just would not. He's more likely to post it online and tell his followers to green screen something in. Oh my God, I haven't checked his Twitter today. We quickly check to see if he posted a green screen photo of this on his Twitter as well. <laughs> you don't see any green screen photo, anything like that, but you see a half written tweet. I was like, got kidnapped today. Kind of cool. And then that's it. LOL. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't get to post it either. It's just this draft. Oh, well, I found his phone. Where are yours? Can I borrow his, your phone, please? Phones. I need to dial Jean's number. Here, you can use mine because it's not like I can dial my boyfriend. Oh, yeah, all the voicemails. Clarabelle dials a number because she can actually remember phone numbers. So I was just going to say, yeah. it's impressive. Okay, it's yeah. The strongest of all okay. of us. As you call, you hear, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> As you hear that, you start feeling that chill creeping in again. The little lights that were left outside are also starting to disappear. Is the sound toward the cold? It's coming yeah. in the same direction. I'm cool just hiding in the armoire since it's not going to eat us this time. I'm not getting back in that fucking thing. Megan's going to duck under a table with a sheet on it and hide underneath the sheet. You yeah, get both? Lil's is gonna, <laughs> Lil's is gonna do the same. So you two are both going into the sheet and then you two are going in the armoire? Yeah, me and Harlow. You're gonna ask him to let you back in? You go up to the armoire, what do you do to get in? I don't know, try and fucking open it. <laughs> if it doesn't open, <laughs> I try knocking. <laughs> the eyes appear, the mustache appears, he goes, <sighs> Did you come for another riddle? No, we just need a place to hide. Is that what we have to do to get in? Is we have to answer a riddle every single time? No, no. You'd have to answer a riddle to get out. But I've never had anybody try to come in. This is most preposterous. All of a sudden, the legs come up, and then they go through the little areas where you would pull to open the door. <laughs> and then <laughs> block that off, and then his eyes and his mustache disappear. Fine, oh, fine. Can we so please used. come in? Please. And then please. in the meantime, you see the shadow looming closer and closer, and it's getting mm. even colder and colder. And you're starting to see that when you breathe, frost is forming, and you can see your breaths. Clarabelle looks around and tries to find something to hide under, something to get inside, or another door. Unfortunately, the only door that's available in that room is just the door that you guys came in through. The only things you can really do are do what they're doing and hope that hiding under a sheet works, or just stand and act like a piece of furniture. Okay, Clarabelle is going to act like a piece of furniture. <laughs> <laughs> I am a coat hanger. Carlo is going to again try and get inside the armoire like desperately, <laughs> like to the point where she's raising the snow globe and she's about to smash the door. This is uncalled for violence. I extremely do not appreciate it. And he just turns, so you're starting to beat his back instead of <laughs> the creature enters the room and like. <gasps> Your teeth are really, really chattering now. It's audible. It's not one of those like little silent ones. Like Mr. And, like, Crab's legs. Yeah. Yeah. If you, if, you peek, <laughs> if you peek out from under the sheet or for you guys where you're visibly seeing this thing, you can see the eyes are red. But other than that, all you can see is kind of a shifting in space to indicate where this creature is moving. And I need y'all to roll again. Eight. One. Um, I'm zero is ten, right? Out of some eight. <laughs> zero is ten. Who's under six right now? Harlow is under six. Your ass being caught out in the open. The eyes lock onto you. You're frozen and you can feel this sifting through your mind. <laughs> What's your happiest memory? Having a panic attack and then Nikki coming in and wrapping his arms tight around me until I stop shaking. Oh, okay. Aww. You feel his arms tight around you and then you feel his arms slowly unwinding from your body as that memory is just plucked. <laughs> oh. oh, shit. You can't see it, but the creature takes it to where its mouth should be. You just get this weird feeling that they relished whatever happened and you have to add an interest for yourself. Oh, I don't feel so good. Mr. Stark, I don't feel so good. <laughs> <laughs> Clarabelle just <laughs> not saying anything. <laughs> that actually fucking worked, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> you got a 10! <laughs> <laughs> so are you guys going to stay where you are or are you going to start creeping out? Because the room is back to the normal room tab. Going to start coming out. I heard my bow's ringtone. Guys, I'm, I'm going to just uh, head that way. Is everybody going to follow? Yeah. Okay, so you hear that. Ah, 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 ah. 
and you keep going down the hallways and this hallway it just seems to keep going and going clearly making progress because if you look back where you just were is very far away and yet you're no closer to where you wanted to be are there any indicators in the hallway or is it just like a plain hallway with nothing it's a plain hallway with nothing except for one or two little areas that you could go off of she starts to break into a run because she's just like why am i not getting any closer <laughs> Please mark one loss of daylight. Are you going to keep running towards the sound or are you going to break off into another room? I'm going to stop next to one of the rooms and just look in and see what's there. Right before you stop, you like trip over something and you just catch yourself. And then as you look down, you see something shiny. Are you going to explore what that shiny thing is? Ooh, yeah. When you look down, it's the promise ring. My promise ring. Jean's in here somewhere. As you peek into this room, you start hearing like, I look behind me to see if anybody else is nearby because I don't really want to go in here alone. You guys should mark down clue. Make it a solid Clarabelle because the hallway is clearly not getting us anywhere and anything that sounds like an Abercrombie or a Hollister is really a good sign, I think. <laughs> I'm not so sure in this house. Is there any kind of like a smell nearby of like really heavy smell? <laughs> <laughs> like, deep no, sandalwood just does... maybe? You just smell or just sweat. Distant... If there is, then it's definitely Nikki's. <laughs> It gets louder and louder and louder. A spotlight shows up in the far distance, and what you see is a pit bull on top of a DJ turntable, just like. <laughs> oh my God! It's Mr. Worldwide. <laughs> you find your bodies walking towards it without a choice. You're just so mesmerized, and then all of a sudden you blink, and then the next thing you know, you guys are in a line. And then you hear, to the left, to the left, to the left, to the right, to the right. Oh, we're dancing in a line, eh? To the right, now kick, now kick, now kick, now kick, now walk it by yourself. And you just find yourself doing that again and again and again and again until finally the dog goes, and then the set fades away and you've lost one daylight. Oh my god. Cupid Shuffle always gets me. Yeah. The only thing that's left in the room that you see is this little disco ball that's lazily rotating. Megan's Wait. going to turn like her flashlight or her phone on at the disco ball to see if it illuminates anything else in the room because it will surely throw an obscene amount of sparkles around this fucking room. <laughs> so it does. It's really, really, really lovely. It's also showing you that the entire ceiling is lined with bats. <gasps> Chad and Lilith volunteered at a bat rescue. Do I recognize what kind of bats they are? Sure, but unfortunately I didn't do any research, so you can decide what bats they are. <laughs> <laughs> They're little brown bats. As I look at them, I'm like, oh, they're so cute. See, I told Chad that they were much cuter than fruit bats, and that's what we were fighting about. Look at how cute they are. <laughs> they are. Probably Robbie doesn't cute. know the difference between a fucking sugar glider and a bat. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Harlow's like, oh, for fuck's sake, we just left a Disney movie, and now we're in the DCEU, and we're in the fucking bat cave. Your voice kind of echoes off the room. In the EU, in the EU, in the EU, in the EU. <laughs> fucking, fucking, fucking. Fucking <laughs> bats open their eyes and then they all look to you, look to the rest of you, and then they come screeching at you. I'm getting the fuck out of there. Are you kidding me? They could have rabies run. You guys go outside and you're in that damned hallway again and you're running, running, again, running, running, and running, running, and running, running, and, running, and you're still running. And you finally find yourselves mysteriously dropped outside of the house and you lost two daylight. What? Oh my gosh! Okay, if we're back outside, Megan is going to her fucking car and like, all right, I'm done fucking around. And she pulls off her fucking high heels and she's going to change into running shoes and grab the tire iron out of her truck. Lilith is going to head back to her car and grab the lighter that's in her glove box. Harlow's going to go in her car and take an out of van. <laughs> Clarabelle's gonna watch the house, standing there like, okay, guys. Do you have your fucking inhaler in your car? You seem to keep needing that. Yeah, I do. That's so probably a good idea. Go Maybe then. I should go get that. I think <laughs> yeah. I also have a flashlight. So Clarabelle's like, fine, I'm gonna go to my car. I'll I'll do what everybody else is doing. Get my flashlight, get my inhaler, get a jacket, and maybe get some Benadryl. Does anybody have water so I could eat this Benadryl? Lilith shuffles around in a messy car, and she's like, I think this one's mostly full. And gives you a bottle of water. Clarabelle looks at the water, and does it look normal? Is it normal, Josie? <laughs> Uh, when you take a sip of it, you gotta get a hint of vodka. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it's a type of water, Russian okay. water. Okay, oh. Clarabelle takes the pill and has a little sip of this uh, water to help it go down. That water was spicy. <laughs> Clarabelle has never <laughs> had alcohol in her life. She and Jean are like pure beans. <laughs> like, what do you mean? What do you mean by spicy? I don't know. Like it kind of like. Let me try. It. Let me try it, spicy. Megan. Oh fuck yeah! And just immediately <laughs> does like two shots of that. Like, all right, wait, we can use this to light the fucking armoire on fire later. I oh. like the way you think. Mm, why? Why right. the armoire? Don't we? Because have... I fucking hate him, and I think it's possible he ate my fucking boyfriend. <laughs> Maybe we should go back in there, though, before we lose any more daylight. What if we see if there's another entrance? Was there only one direction to go in the foyer? You guys could have gone up the stairs. You can look for another entrance if you want. Are there any other visible entrances to the house? Not necessarily super visible, but you can tell in the garden area, there's what looks kind of like cellar doors, but still overgrown by a lot of plants and whatnot. Clarabelle has learned that in scary places, you don't go in the basement. Well, let me sweeten the pot. (laughs) <laughs> you hear and then you see like a slight like thudding against the cellar doors carlos goes nikki i'm coming nikki he's chasing her he's like I'm my boyfriend was fucking kidnapped that seems like a good idea clarabelle just darts over there too there's a latch on top of it to like keep the doors closed mm. but you can see it bump in and bump in and you can hear that sound like the do you think a tire speak. iron would break the lock or the door is it like a locked latch like it clearly has like some kind of a key it's a locked latch. The lock is quite rusty. I'm gonna yeah, try to lock to pick it. Okay, you try to lock pick it. If that doesn't work, I'm breaking the motherfucker. Okay, roll. Nine. Oh shit, you open it. Who's pulling the doors open? Because it's gonna I'm, open this way. I'm helping. Pull okay, so you two are pulling the doors open. Maybe <laughs> still has a tire iron. I'm just kind of disappointed you <laughs> didn't get to hit it. Okay. <laughs> when you open the doors, what you see is an entire legion of thralls just coming forward. Damn like, it. Oh, I'm they're all trying to grab at you. Oh, oh shit, run. run! Let's go, go, go! So, roll. Thralls. Thralls, T-H-R-A-L-S. Thralls, 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 I got a three. Thralls. God damn it, I got a three I got a too. seven, but I the door's a spring. I'll be right back. I got a four, but can I hit one of them? <laughs> does, does I have a weapon? Can I get advantage? Sure. You can roll again. Fuck yeah! All right, I got a two, so I got a four. <laughs> 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 Wait, can I roll again because I got the umbrella? Sure. You can roll again because you have a snow globe if you still have it. Go for it. Okay. I yes. got a nine. Yes, I definitely do. God damn it. I got a one. Uh, okay. <laughs> so everybody except for Lilith takes I'm just an a injury. weak bitch today. Lilith, what you notice is as these thralls are grabbing, 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 one of them actually like has something stuck to their flesh. Do you want to try and grab for it? Yes. You successfully grab it, and then what are you guys going to do? Are you going to leave the cellar doors open? Are you going to try and close them? Well, how many um, thralls are in there? Over 40. They're just reaching for oh, you and, like, grabbing yeah, ashes. They haven't managed closing. to get out. They've only, like, no, not yet. managed to, like, fuck this, close it. They've just managed to scratch at you guys. That's it. Yeah, yeah, we're closing it. And okay. the lock still works because we didn't break it. So, yes. right. nice. Okay. Perfect. Way to go, Lilith. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you lock it, and then you just hear the... Ah, ah, Again, but you're fine. Lilith, in your hand, you find a Trojan XXL that reads for the stallion in you. I'm so fuming, raging, fucking mad. I'm like, see, I knew it. I knew he was. I knew it. I knew he was. Up do you snatch the condom out of Lilith's hand? Yes, I do. <laughs> And I'm kind of like, ooh, take it. Is that okay, the was- orgy? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Why did we take damage then? <laughs> you took an injury, and now you guys also get to add a clue. Woo! All right. Orgies can be dangerous. Have you not seen Hero Dasm? <laughs> Now that you've seen that there is another entrance just to the cellar and full of thralls, what are you going to do? Back to the fucking house. Yep. Yep. So as you enter the house, it's the same old shit that you saw. Are you going to go up the stairs? Are you going to go down the hallway? Let's try up Um, the stairs the same. Clarabelle wants to try dialing the phone again just to see if it's still going. You dial, and it says, the user you have dialed is not connected. Please check the number and dial again. I guess we'll go up the stairs. As you go up the stairs, you just hear a... Lots of screaming. Just unidentifiable screaming. Megan's got the stairs with a tire iron. 
<laughs> when you get to the top of the stairs, you see this old lady, and she's pointing at the bottom of the stairs. Her mouth is open, and she just screams, 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 Holy screams, shit. Screams. Are you okay? <laughs> Are you looking at her? Are you checking for things? Yeah. So you can see that on her chest, she has a little name tag, and it says, Madame Plumba. Madame, Madame Plumba? Plumba. Plumba. Madame uh, Plumba? <laughs> Her name is Rumba. Come on, Tally Boo. She looks at you, screams, and points down the stairs again. Uh, and you can see her hand is kind of shaking on the railway, and it uh, looks like she was trying to go down the stairs, but she couldn't. <laughs> Do we have to turn on the ledge? <laughs> turn her around. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna walk up and like push on the hand that's pointing mm -hmm. back behind her. Like trying to like do this number with her? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she starts to turn with you and then she faces upstairs again and her mouth shuts. She stops screaming. <laughs> and then she doesn't even acknowledge your existence. She just starts <laughs> ambling away. But you notice stuck to her foot, trailing after her is the thread of your himbo's gloves. I turn around to the rest of the group and I'm like, first of all, what the fuck? Second of all, this is a thread from Nikki's, or not Nikki. What? <laughs> from Nikki? <laughs> oh. This is a thread from Chad's gloves that his gammy made him. His big, big gloves. I miss his big hands <laughs> he's That's definitely cute. been here he wouldn't leave home without these that's cute but my nikki special orders a trojan xxl okay it can't be that unique i'm talking about hands <laughs> <laughs> so first we're gonna lose daylight because her whole screaming debacle took so fucking long <laughs> And you're going to add another clue. Yes, Ooh. you do get a clue. As you guys end up on the top step, you notice that there are more portraits. So it's the person who was in the first portrait by the foyer, but there is another being in the portrait with them, other than Mr. Kitten, who's the cat. That person has been X'd out, just Ooh. scribbled over, and that's another clue. That's one hell of a way to show that you hate someone. I guess that's what happens when you can't just nice unfriend thing? somebody on social media. <laughs> <laughs> I bet if we looked hard enough, there's a dusty old burn book in here. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anybody who looks familiar to us? You recognize the fact that it was the same person from downstairs, but that's about it. Okay, it doesn't look like anybody we would know or anything. No, but you do notice that the clothing is a little bit more modern than previously. Ahead of us, like, is it just one direction we can go? So you see a room off to the side and then another corridor, like another hallway upstairs leading to a few more other rooms. Wait, have you tried calling Nikki again? Because like, even if the voicemail is full, you may still hear it ring, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I guess I, I could try that. Does Farabelle still have my... Yes, yes, have it back. Thank you. Harlow Q is going to call Nikki. From one of the rooms further down, you hear, X gon' give it to you! Da, 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 da. <laughs> Harlow's going to get super, super emotional and basically just, like, go straight for it. Are y'all gonna follow her speed or are y'all gonna rouse as you go? <laughs> I'm gonna look around as I go. For those of you going by slower, you're noticing that there's more portraits of the same guy from downstairs. But instead of their body, they have Men's Health magazine covers <laughs> plastered on top, but with just the head portion cut off and angled exactly so that it's that person's face and then the Men's Health magazine bodies. <laughs> is it well done or is it like really fucking obvious? What is creepier? If it's well done or if it's just thrown up there haphazardly? I'm not sure which would be worse. If it's well being done. displayed proudly, haphazardly is creepier. Haphazardly it is! <laughs> <laughs> and that would be another clue for you guys. As you go straight, straight, straight to the room, you run into a library. Mickey does love to read. Harlequin is looking at the erotica section. I'm looking at the health and fitness section. For the erotica section, it's like old Karma Sutra, like the first edition in the scroll format. Then the subsequent editions with books and illustrations. <laughs> it's like a bunch of ukiyo-e and all this other collected from throughout the world, like different types of erotica. And then in the health section, it's got a lot of holistic shit, a lot about like, protein.
routines and weight gain, <laughs> weight loss, and stuff you've seen on your himbo's wall and whatever, stuff like that. Are Claire yeah. Bell even looking at anything? The zoology section. The zoology section. All right, let me just pull something out of my ass. Uh, you see a bunch of shit about animals. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> She starts just like pulling out a bunch of random books. Jean loves this animal. Jean loves this animal. Oh. Uh, Meg is not looking for any particular books. She's looking to see if anything in the library doesn't look like it belongs. Like a book that doesn't seem real. Something that like, it's a weird, creepy fucking old house. We're trying to see if any of these bookshelves are doors. You find one that actually catches your eye. Kind of past the erotica section and past the men's health area that everybody else is looking at. As you go to look at it it starts to feel a little hot in the area that you're in why like, did they bring this jacket <laughs> <laughs> when you take a step back from that area and then when you step forward again it's hot and like just regular room temp i'm gonna try to see if i can figure out if the heat is coming from somewhere like if there's a vent somewhere or something that is exuding heat in this area you notice a vent exuding a little bit of heat but also that area where that book caught your eye it seems like the book is hot megan is going to reach towards the book but she's going to use the back of her hand to check for temperature you hear a little and your hand just jerks away from it. We're gonna try poking it with the end of the tire iron. It falls onto the ground from the little pedestal area that it was on, and then it flops open. Is everybody else going to gather around it and look? I'm gonna check it out. I'm curious. Did we find the phone? I'm guessing that Harlow Q did find the phone or no? I don't know. You didn't say you were looking for the phone when you came in, so. You just oh, said- you're right, because I went straight for the yeah, erotica section. Yeah. <laughs> Priorities. <laughs> Harlow's going to look for the phone. The do 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 da do 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 is coming from within the erotica section as well, because- uh, That's right. <laughs> I know. I know my boyfriend. <laughs> you find the phone in one of the oldest scrolls that when you open it up, it almost falls apart, and then it's just the phone. I'm gonna go through the phone history. It's at 1%, so you were super fucking lucky that you were able to call. Oh, wow. I put it on low power mode, it's fine. It has a bunch of fucking missed calls from you, all from you. It says, babe, 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 babe. There's nothing out of the ordinary. You see text to his mom that says, me and babe, we're like, Drinking milk in the photo reel. You see a bunch of photos taken for research of the different poses that he saw in the book. <laughs> I get an initial flutter of excitement because I know where research leads to. It leads to a fantastic experiment. And so <laughs> I just kind of table it for now since everybody else has gone and uh, basically just follow them over. All four of you find your eyes drawn to this open page on the book. And you all see different things. But basically, as Josie called it out, motherfucker, it's a burn book. <laughs> <laughs> all the shit these bitches at your job said about you while you weren't there. All the shit people at the gym were saying about you and your himbo. Megan is taking pictures. I knew Samantha was a fucking bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody takes one hit of psychic damage. <laughs> Oh, oh, and you have lost yourself so deeply in this fucking book that you've lost a thing of daylight as well. It was <gasps> No! Did you find that phone? Yeah, it was among the eroticas. <laughs> Wait, what? What did you find? I'm not going to tell you. That's that's not something what? that I can what do you? Find. What do you mean you're not going to tell us? We're looking for our fucking partners! What did you find? It's for me and Nikki. You found I sex can't. pictures? Y yes. I don't care about your sex life. You two haven't found your partner's phones yet, right? No, I haven't found their phone, but I found our promise ring. Your, your what? Oh, our promise ring. Like, we're not... <laughs> we promised not to have sex before marriage. How long ago was that? Um, like a year ago. How long have you been together? About three, four years. Yeah, he's not gonna marry you, I'm sorry. And you haven't fucked him? Oh, we fucked. We just haven't had sex. <laughs> Wait, Megan stares and... <laughs> How does that work? They're asking for a friend. <laughs> asking for a friend. <laughs> you know, like, like sex is sacred, so, you know. We were, we're keeping funny. that on the table until we get married, and then... Are you fucking on that table where you're keeping the sex for later? 
No, we fuck on the bed. I highly um, recommend fucking on the table, honestly. Yeah, it's really good. Megan is low-key raging after the burn book incident and the uselessness <laughs> of the erotica section, and she's just storming out of the fucking <laughs> library at this point, and is now like, just, Ronnie! Ronnie, are you here? And is just yelling for him now. When you run out, you see this figure with bangs that cover their face. They have like yeah. nail polish, wearing like stripes and sleeves that come up to their fingers and they're on their phone and just chilling and chewing gum off of the corner. Megan is making a fucking beeline and fucking jabs them. Not hard enough to hurt, but pokes them with her tire iron. Hey! So the tire iron goes straight through them and then they're like, ow. And then they go back to their phone. I found a ghost! Are you guys the virgins? Um, Who yeah. No, about? honey. Well, this one, I don't think they know if they are or not. Megan kind of like, <laughs> looks like <laughs> yeah, <Tinkerbell. definitely. laughs> Maybe in like the Mormon sense, I don't know. <laughs> what are you doing here? Mm, never mind, I actually don't really care. No, 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 no. We're looking, we're looking for some people. Maybe you've seen them. Maybe. They go back to their phone. Clarabelle just kind of sticks her nose where the phone is and just like looking right up at the person. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen four people, four human beings that are alive, and not ghosts? And like, really not, not us. And yes, and not us. Damn. I was going to say that. <laughs> That's not cool. <laughs> yeah, I've seen them. And then they kind of like float away a little bit so that you're not in their face with their phone. Did you say, yeah, we have seen them? Is that what he said? I have a name, you know. Oh, sorry. Yeah, we, can, we can do all that stuff What's later. your name? Edgelord Cullen. <laughs> I'm, Ed Ed I'm sorry, it's what? It's Edgelord Cullen. Do you have a problem with that? No, not at all. Cool. Edgelord, Edgelord, please tell us, have, where, where did these people go? Our partners, they've gone missing. They're in this house. Obviously, we found things that are theirs. He looks at you and he goes, really? You have a part? Okay. Oh, uh -oh. rude. Rude. <laughs> Look, we're just looking for a couple of guys. We've been looking for them for a while. We think they're here. We found some of their stuff. Can you help us? What's in it for me? What do you want, kid? I have a flashlight. What would that do for me? It's shiny and cool. Here's a question. Does that fucking ghost phone of yours play music or whatever? No. Would you like a phone that does? You look like someone who could really use a hit of Mayday Parade. That's like kind of cool, whatever. Yeah? Yeah. Cool. I have two phones right now and I don't necessarily need both of them. If you can point us to our partners, I can leave one here for you with whatever fucking emo playlist on Spotify play you want. That's a good deal. Trust me, your Android won't last very long. Did you bring a charger for it? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> That kind of would be like betraying my roomie, you know? But that's like Is cool. It? Isn't your roomie kind of fucking betraying you by not letting you listen to the new My Chemical Romance album? You know they dropped the new one, right? What? Have you heard it? It's pretty mm -hmm. fucking good. I mean, I don't care. If you don't like Gerard Way, I can take my fucking phones and leave and we can listen to it in my AirPods where you can't hear it. Hand it over first. Tell us where to go first. Uh, down the stairs. We've been down the stairs. Basement. The basement? The basement. Where the fucking guys were? I have There's a better idea. There. Why don't you come with us? We can play whatever music you want along the way, and then I'll leave it with you. Megan is like one-handed pulling up Spotify, and while he's considering, you hear the first like, bing, bing, <laughs> bing, bing. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> notes start playing, and then pauses it before the good shit hits. Ugh. Let's go. That was brilliant, by the way. You're awesome. Thanks, honey. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> it was okay, I guess. <laughs> Sends you down the stairs, down to the hallway, and then he's like, "I don't, I don't actually like coming down here because the guy. What guy? What fucking thing that comes at you with the knife? Ah, the goose. You're afraid of the goose." It's the goose did stab one of you earlier, right? We we ran into him. We survived. It's fine. They can't hit you, right? Motherfucker can go through anything. <laughs> It'd be a sick story to tell afterwards. It's true. If you got past the beast. With it's us. true. Should we go first? I'm not like scared or anything, but you know. Yeah, which way? Down this hallway, there's a set of stairs that's hidden behind. You got to pull a little thing. I can't. You're going to have to pull the thing. I'll pull the thing. Megan walks in that fucking direction. Just <laughs> over this. I'll fucking punch a goose at this point. As you're walking, you hear a faint 
slap a feet against the floor, and then you hear a fucking honk. No! <laughs> Edge Lord, he can't touch you, but he wraps around you, legs on your shoulders. Uh, in the darkness, you see a glint from the knife. So I need it all to roll, please. No, not again. I barely survived the last one. <laughs> oh, I got an eight. I got a one. I got a four. <laughs> I got an eight. Everyone under a ten takes damage. Under a ten? Oh my god. That's a scam. Strong. I to when you were trying to convince our boyo, Edgelord, to interact with you, that was one daylight. Oh, oh my god. god. The goose throws the knife and it ricochets off of one of you, slices into the other cheek, ricochets onto another person, slices <laughs> right past their ear, and it clatters onto the floor. The goose is going for it. Uh, yeah, fucking knife. Yeah, clear Get the knife. Oh, diving. Roll. Eight. Oh shit. Two. Uh, Whoever rolled eight gets it. Gets fuck it. yeah, Megan, grab that fucking knife. The goose is grabbing the knife. You're both pulling and tugging. This goose has a lot of fucking strength. Bring the fucking tire iron down with the other hand. <laughs> see your head like kind of swoosh in, and then the lips open, and then you see this like terrifying array of teeth in it. Ah! And then it, oh like, at you. Dabby at its general direction, like, get the fuck away from me, stabbing. <laughs> it leaves. Edgelord is still wrapped around you and is like, is it fucking gone? Yes, it's fucking gone. Which room are we supposed to be in? Oh my god. He looks at you with, like, sparkles in his eyes and just kind of like, looking at you and then looking back at his phone and then kind of looking at you. <laughs> and then eventually he leads you to this little neck area that has a little gargoyle and he's like, you just gotta press... He has no muscles, but he tries. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of you do this, my hands are full. I got this. You hear the like. <laughs> Why can I make these noises? <laughs> <laughs> A little passageway opens up. Carol, did you bring that flashlight from your car? Yeah, I did. The one I was going to give to Mr. Edgelord here. I didn't want it. I like darkness, black, and pain. <laughs> can you feel pain? Figuratively! <laughs> he takes psychic damage. <laughs> Our partners are down here, is what you're saying. Yeah, but my roomie doesn't let me past here. You're on Who your is this roomie you keep talking about? He's the nameless. No name at all? John Doe. How did you fill out your lease agreement? I don't know. I'm a oh, it's like an under the table situation, isn't it? What? You a cop? You gonna report me? No. I don't get it. Like, how does a really cool girl like you hang out with, like, marks, man? We're not friends. But you and I, and Megan kind of steps closer. So, nameless. What should I know about this person? Like, what do you want to know? If listening to Hawthorne Heights has taught me anything, it's that you get the most out of your experience if you're really ready for it. And I want to be really ready for this experience. Have you My heart kissed? is in Ohio. Wow. H have you kissed? Shut the fuck up. No. <laughs> you kissed someone already? I told you I wasn't a fucking virgin. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you looking for pure little snowflakes? No, I thought you were edgier than that. I wouldn't. John Dole the Nameless is he sleeps a lot, okay? He only comes out at night. What do you want to know? Hmm. It's sweating again. <laughs> <laughs> is John down here with our partners? He's in the attic. Do we get a clue for that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Our partners are down here. Was anything with them? Was there like a fucking dog spinning records or something? Mr. 305, he'll show up wherever. <laughs> Where do you want me to leave the phone? Here, we'll do. <laughs> Megan's like, all right. Roddy's phone. Sorry, babe. To place it on the fucking ghost hand. And it has <laughs> like, Let's go. Come on. He's like, fuck. Why didn't I think? <laughs> <laughs> you go down this area. It's a really nice, well lit area. It looks like a basement. There's a door. It has caution tape, wood panels, and stuff on it. it. Says, don't open. And you can hear like a. <laughs> There's all this piping, and if you go through, it seems like there could be something else there, and then there's a little small room off to the side as well. Clarabelle goes to where the sounds are and is like, Jean, if you can hear me, hum our favorite tune. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I don't think they're in there. <laughs> you don't think they're in there? Why not? Jean would have hummed our favorite tune, and all I heard was, was a mm! Megan gets close and is like, hey, let me try something. Couching your macros doesn't do shit! <laughs> to be fair, that is the noise he would make if he disagreed and he was bound and gagged. <laughs> <laughs>
let's check the rest of this room and use that as the last resort. Sounds good to me. I'm gonna go in this room over here. When you enter the small room, you just see jars and jars of specimens in this purpley liquid. And if you look closer, they're rats, like JoJo style rats. <laughs> the muscles that have muscles, and that's clear. You said also that there was something by the pipes and stuff, like there was maybe something there. Yeah. Megan's gonna check that part out. Okay. Harlow Q gets the idea to wave the Trojan XXL condom in front of the rats, and whichever <laughs> one sort of freaks out has got to be, might be Nikki. <laughs> One of the rats is like rotating around in the fluid. When you like wave it, you see a little jerk. That's it. Lilith is gonna check out the rats. Do any of them have like a familiar looking face? <laughs> There's something in their eyes. Are you calling like boyfriend a rat face? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know your boyfriend. I wouldn't know. There's nothing familiar about them. As you as you go through the pipes, are you gonna be the only one or are you gonna have everyone go with you? She doesn't want anything to fucking do with a bitch who's gonna wave a condom at a rat. That's not her <laughs> There's a specific reason behind that, and it kind of sort of worked, because one of the rats reacted to it. At this point, I'm not ruling anything out. Not even the possibility of our partners being turned into rats. Ronnie is going to be fucking fine. I'm going this way. I'm gonna follow. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Are you gonna leave Nikki behind? I personally would have not just me. take the jar with you! Okay, fine! Thank you. <laughs> With Nikki the rat cradled in your arm. Yes. <laughs> you guys like navigate through all this piping and then you come across this laboratory-esque area. It looks hella sci-fi. There's fluids bubbling here and there. It's got a lot of like boards with shit written down on them, formulas in a different language that I didn't bother to make up, so you just don't know the language. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but Megan's a doctor. Wouldn't she know that language? Yeah, wouldn't Megan know that language? Sure, if you can make sense of what a century looks like Wingdings font, sure. <laughs> yeah, maybe she's like a linguist. Wait, but what if Roddy likes to send secret love notes, which is literally just him using Wingdings to leave little messages around the house? Roll. Is there anything? Is there anything I could decipher from this? Roll <laughs> seven. Oh shit! All right. <laughs> you see that there are names, and it's all your respective partners' names. Oh my god! And then they're scribbled with their attributes, the best things about them. Oh my god! You guys, this is talking about them. This is talking about Ronnie. It's talking about how fucking hot he is. <laughs> it say anything nice about to eat. Yes, yes. It says oh, it's uh, one of them is nice to fucking animals or something. One of them is like really calming or whatever the fuck that means. This is them. This is talking about them. It's using their names. It's the rats. It's not the fucking rats. <laughs> I refuse to believe that. Maybe they're back in that room. We have to go and check. So you can mark your final clue. Woo! Hell yeah. Let's recap. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> we know in the basement there's a bunch of thralls. Yes. We knew in the cellar there was. And we also know where the other fucking thing is, so we don't have a lot of time. Okay, let's put these clues together. Oh, do you want me to tell you what the clues are? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> we, we are putting the clues together. <laughs> so you clearly found cell phones that indicate that your thembos, your himbos are here. You found the promise ring, you found your knitted gloves, you found the Trojan XXL. You found a painting of a person dressed in Victorian clothes, John Doe, the nameless. You saw another portrait of them in more modern clothing. He has plastered men's health bodies all over his portraits. They uh, had somebody else with them in the portrait, but they scratched that out. Any photos that your himbos took with their new friend didn't have a person in them. You found a hmm. lot of creatures in jars with purple fluid that were absurdly muscular looking. You are in a laboratory. His name was trying to get ripped? It seems like it. He's either trying to build the perfect body or trying to build the perfect boyfriend. And on God, he cannot have mine. Is he using our partner's physical traits to experiment on these rats? Well, if so, they will have the most calming rat army ever. The most calming rat army. If any part of Roddy is a part of that, I just don't, I don't know if I believe that. As you say the calming thing, holding Nikki the rat, you feel a sense of calming. See? See? Always use a condom. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Claire, 
back into that room and hold the promise ring up, showing it to every <laughs> every rat in the jar. Jean, Jean, anybody? You hear a little like. <laughs> I look for it and pick up that jar. You're like, Jean, is that you? Ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I can understand you. Wow, that's interesting. Whoa, you can talk. You two can understand each other. He's just okay. <laughs> Nobody else understands. So you is just she know. talking to a rat? She also thinks sex and fucking are different. Are you surprised? <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen four humans that look like us but are not us? A lot burlier, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen them. I've seen them for sure. Where? I mean, with my eyes. You do you know where they went? Uh, I'm sorry. I don't really know. All I know is I can talk to you. That's really cool. Hey, do you happen to have some cheese on you? I really love cheese. I'd love to have some. Uh, that yeah, that is really cool. Um, let me see if I have any cheese. Uh, uh can I roll to see if I have cheese? Yeah. <laughs> roll for cheese. <laughs> I got a ten. <laughs> oh, you have cheese. I open up the little jar and stick the cheese in the water. <laughs> oh, wow, it really tastes good with the additional, like, my juices. Do you know what this juice is? I don't really know. Before, I was just a rat. But now that I've been in this juice, I'm a thinking rat. I think. <laughs> Therefore, I am? Yes, you are. Guys, guys, it's a thinking rat. Does the thinking rat know where our boyfriends are? They saw them, but don't know where they are. That doesn't help us. If there's more room in the lab and we think that the rats are starting to act like our boyfriends, they might be in here. Oh, that's true. We're gonna fan out and check out the lab. As you go into the lab further and further, there's a door. You see these huge clear vats. At least from that point of view, you see one body that's naked floating in this purple liquid. How and nice is his ass? ass. <laughs> you know this ass? Right! <laughs> <laughs> As you guys pile into the room, you see your respective bows all suspended in liquid, butt ass naked, just chilling. Are they awake? No. Uh, I go and find Jean. Yeah, I'm gonna hey, go, hey, go hey. and find Chad. I'm like kind of like tapping his cheek, trying to wake him up. Megan's looking okay. for any kind of a control panel or a switch or something in the room. If you follow the tubing on the top, it leads down to this control panel, and you see in fucking Webding's font again. Don't press. Uh, should we press it? We should press it. I'll press the button. You press it, and you hear like a bleep, 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 bleep. Fumes start pouring out of all of the capsules, and the liquids uh -oh. just drain and drain, and your bow's body slowly are following the drainage, and then they just kind of like crumple to the bottom of the capsule. But they're still in the capsules. The capsules haven't opened, but you can see their chests heaving. They are breathing. Is there a door on the capsules? You can make a door. Megan's fucking swinging. <laughs> <laughs> crack and a crack. The capsule bursts open. Your boo just like slides onto the ground. Megan tosses a tire iron for whoever wants to go next and grabs Roddy. Still asleep. Oh, where's your Lululemon, babe? <sighs> you never would have your Lululemon. <laughs> I grab the tire iron and I smash mine. His body does like a smooth slide with the remaining liquid out onto the floor and he falls into your arms. I'm trying to like get him awake a little bit, like talk to him like, hey, you okay? He's still all sleeping. I pull the tire iron out without really looking. Okay, I grab it, bust it open. Same thing, and, uh, it comes out, falls into you like this. I pull out a piece of cheese and I hold it in front of their nose. And I'm like, hey, babe, I, I found a talking rat. Rat from the jar is like, I want that, I want that, give it to me. It's not for you. <laughs> <laughs> no response from Jean. Okay, here. Yeah. Thank you. So Harlow takes it and taps it against the glass. Harder! Like he's been cheating on you. He <laughs> smashes that shit right <laughs> The glass goes like fucking flying. Megan protects her boy's beautiful face like a girl. That's right. <laughs> To get him to wake up, she's going to get real close to his ear, and then she's going to say, we're going to have to practice abstinence for one month. <laughs> or abstinence. <laughs> Not even a month. See his dick twitch a little bit, and <laughs> nothing happens. Clarabelle just starts dragging Jean, like, puts her arms under their armpits and just kind of just starts to pull back. As you drag them, their head kind of flops, and you see their lips kind of, like, a little bit. <laughs> Clarabelle sees this, leans down, is like, oh, babe. Mwah. Beams <laughs> of light emit from the fuck now. Megan is like, what the fuck? He goes, I've been dreaming of a 
true. <laughs> he grabs you by the face and just ah, plants you. So is that what all of us have to do then? Yes, try it. Just do it. Oh, okay. oh I've missed you so much. I'm going to bend down and kiss my guy. He wakes up and he sees you and he goes, my beautiful gothic angel and pulls you down and just holds you. Oh. No. <laughs> Fucking adorable. So Harlow's second attempt. She's going to set Nikki Rat down. <laughs> She's going to take out the condom. And she's going to put it right up against his ear and just like ruffle it. And then she's going to tear it open real, real slowly. She's going to pass it underneath his nose like smelling salts because he knows the scent of it. He knows how it fucking smells. Nikki's <laughs> fucking pop open his right. ramrod straight. That's right. He lifts you. Y'all are That's right. I know that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Megan is like, what the fuck? Deep breaths. Deep breaths. He grabs Ryan by the face and fucking kisses him. <laughs> oh, hey, babe. Did you get kidnapped too? <laughs> what? <laughs> he asked, did you get kidnapped too? Of course he didn't fucking get... Get up. Get up. Are you okay? He just picks you Aww. up. Aww. Aww. Megan's trying to pretend like she doesn't really fucking enjoy that, but it's like she's not good at hiding He's that. Like, All of you, I guess, except for Harlow, Q, and Nikki. <laughs> <laughs> respectively amble out into your cars and drive home. But I need you to do one final roll. It's a D6. Two. Five. Four. One. For my four and my five, you escape. But unfortunately, the same shit happens again the next day. <laughs> Yay! That was so much fun! I know! That was Great. fun. Oh my god. <laughs> Next time you ran into Madame Roomba, I was gonna have her trapped behind some furniture. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, she's stuck on a ledge, guys. <laughs> I was so glad you guys got it. I was like, oh no, yeah. Madame Roomba, R- Roomba, Roomba, Roomba. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was so much fun. That was As you great. guys drive off in your Aston Martin, a lone ghost looks by <laughs> on the window pane. <laughs> oh no. Megan Megan does allow for the lone ghost to maintain access to that Spotify account until it loses power. Oh. <laughs> but she also does every so often enforce a little bit of K-pop on it. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a particularly pissy mood at work. <laughs> Thank y'all for being here, and I'll catch you next week for more Bayo, and then we'll be back to our regularly scheduled D and D stuff next month, I think. So, bye.